Welcome back everyone. Uh, what is a map app without a pin on the map? It would be nothing. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna basically add some custom map annotation pins onto the map. Uh, we're gonna first start with the basic pins that Apple is giving us in SwiftUI, and then we're gonna change them and swap them out for some more custom pins uh, that we're gonna create ourselves and I think will fit our personal app theme a little bit better. Okay, okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, let's jump into our locations view. Let's click resume here. And right now, as you guys can see in our app, we have the map. It's a pretty simple map. It's just a plain map and we're changing the location, but we don't have any kind of pins or markers on the map. And of course we wanna add some because that'll look so much better. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. And we're gonna do that by just changing the initializer of this map. I did this one to start just cause it's easy to get going. But if we look here and we type in map and we open the parentheses, there's actually uh, a lot more that we can add to this initializer here. So we have the plane coordinate region, but we also have uh, these ones with annotation items. So we're gonna go with this one as annotation items and annotation content. We'll click enter. So firstly, let's bind to the same vm.region like we had. We can get rid of our first map, let's delete it. And now we can add annotation items. So let's make that separate line as well as the annotation content. And then we need a random access collection. So if you've never seen that before, you might be like wondering what on earth is a random access collection? Well, really it's just a collection of items. And I think it could be any item that is identifiable or hashable. But we have actually seen this and used this before. So in our for each loops here, when we use the identifiable initializer here, we're actually passing in a random access collection. If I press command shift O and bring up the open quickly menu and I type in for each, we can then go to the documentation for our for each loops. We've done this many times in all of my courses. We, go, we type in for each. It's like a pretty common thing in Swift UI. The data that we're passing into a for each loop is where the data conforms to a random access collection. So we've already been obviously passing in data to for each loops. So we must have been already conforming to random access collection. So we've been using these all along and the annotation items that we're going to add into this map app. So we want to pin the annotation. Annotation items are basically just like pins. Uh, so where, what pins do we want to put onto the map? And obviously that's going to be all of our locations. So very simply, we can do vm.locations. And then the annotation content is for each location, what do we actually want to put on the map? And you'll notice here that in order to use the annotation content, uh, the, random ac the items in that random access collection need to conform to identifiable. Now, if we look at our locations model, we already conform to identifiable. So we actually don't need to do anything further. So we have identifiable and we'll click enter on that. So we're looping on here each location. So we're giving it the array of locations and then we're looping on each location. Pretty much the same thing that we have here for each locations and then we get a location. This is locations and then we get a location. And now we can put something on the map. And if I click on this uh, error message here, we can see that we need to add something that conforms to map annotation protocol. And let's just start quickly by adding a map pin, which will conform to that protocol. So clearly map pin, it will be deprecated. So let's use map marker, sorry, map marker. I've never even used this one. Uh, let's open the parentheses here and we can pass in a coordinate and a tint color. So now each location already has coordinates. So we'll do location, so we'll do location dot coordinates and the tint color, let's just make it Let's make it dot blue just for a second because we're going to get rid of this in a second. I just want to show you guys that we can add these markers quickly. So if we click resume, we should see these map markers now on our map. So these are kind of like the default pin markers that Apple's giving us. Clearly they want us to use this. And I think they look good, but I think we can make custom markers that look a little bit better. They'll be maybe more aligned with the UI of our app. So what we're going to do instead of the map marker here, we're going to use a map annotation. We'll open the parentheses and we'll use the coordinate and content. So the coordinate again will be the location dot coordinates. And then the content, we can add in our own content here. So we can add in any kind of pin that we want onto this map, which is so cool. 
So if I just put text here that says hello, at the location of each of our pins, we now have the word hello. Obviously that doesn't look very good, uh, but it's so cool that we can add pretty much anything as the marker. And it's so easy to do, right? All we did is add this and now we can add anything we want here. Uh, so let's make a custom pin for our map. So we're gonna do that in a new file. Let's right click the navigator in our views folder and create a new file. It'll be a Swift UI view and let's call this location map annotation view. All right, let's click resume here. All right, and the first thing we wanna do is get, let's get that color, the accent color for our app. So we'll say let accent color equals color and we're gonna access, so in our assets folder, we have an accent color here that we made in the first video. Uh, it's just this red color. We're gonna get that. So it's called accent color, as you can see here. We're gonna type in exactly that. So here we're gonna say color, and we'll use the accent color. So now we can get that red color, and then we can use that for these pins. These pins are gonna be fairly simple. Let's make a V stack, open the brackets. We're gonna do spacing of zero, and then at the top, we're gonna to do an image. We'll use a system name. So we're gonna use a system icon here. And again, if you've never used system icons, I covered them in the bootcamp, but the SF Symbols is a free app that you can download, just Google SF Symbols. It's on apple.com. And there's all of these symbols that we can use that come built into Xcode. And if I type in a map, there's a whole bunch of cool map ones and we're gonna use this one right here. So map.circle.fill. I'm gonna right click it and copy the name. And then let's just paste that into here. We'll click resume and let's make it resizable. Let's make it scaled to fit. And I try to always keep icons scaled to fit so that they stay in their perfect aspect ratio because icons look pretty good in a specific aspect ratio that we don't really wanna change. So scale to fill might look a little funky for each icon. Um, so let's keep it with fit. And then let's give it a frame. And we're gonna make these pretty small. So we'll do maybe a width and a height of 30. And we don't need the alignment. All right, so let's give this uh, maybe a font of headline. I think it'll look a little thicker. And let's give it a foreground color. Right now it's black and I wanna invert that. So let's make it that white. And we should then see that. And then let's give it a background of accent color. So we have a background of, of red. And before we add the background, let's add padding here of maybe six. So that looks better. And then let's add corner radius onto the background so that it looks circular. So we have the frame here of 30 and then padding of six. So 36 is kind of the entire height of this frame. So let's give it a corner radius of 36. And that will make it look like a perfect circle. All right, below this, we're gonna add another image and we're gonna use another system name. So going back to the SF symbols, uh, we're just gonna type in triangle because there is no shape triangle by default in uh, Swift UI. We could make one, but uh, we can just use this triangle.fill with these nice little rounded corners. I think it will look good. So let's copy that one, triangle.fill, and let's make that our second image here. So it's a V stack, so it's gonna be below it. Let's also make this one resizable and scaled to fit. Let's make this red, so we'll give this a foreground color and we'll use our accent color. Let's give it a frame, so we're gonna make this much smaller, maybe 10 by 10. Zoom in here. All right, so we can see it. All right, let's give this a dot rotation of angle. And you probably guessed it. We wanna flip it upside down. So let's do 180 degrees. That looks good. And then we can see there's a little tiny bit of spacing in between these two and we don't really need that. So let's just do a quick offset here and we're gonna use the Y axis and, and we'll maybe make it negative four. So it just pushes up a tiny little bit I think that'll look pretty natural, maybe negative three. I think that'll look pretty natural in our app. The last thing we wanna do is, so this is something that you probably wouldn't realize when you're first building this, but basically the frame of our entire V stack is right here. So if I add a background, so if I add a background onto the V stack here, we can do, do color.blue. We can see that the whole frame is exactly that. 
And what's going to happen is when we add this annotation view onto the map, the location of this pin is going to be exactly on top, right? The center of this is going to be exactly where the location is. So really what we want to do is put this pin above where the location is. So because we want the location to really be at the bottom of this little point down here and not right in the center of this pin because then it would be blocking the location. So very simply, all we're going to do is add some padding at the bottom of this second image. So we'll add dot padding, we'll do dot bottom, and we'll do maybe 35. So now the center will be right about here. We could even do maybe more than that, 40. The center of this will be right about here, uh, and then the pin will be above it. And I think that'll look a little bit better because we don't want to block the actual location. So let's get rid of our background color. That looks good. Let's just, while we're here, let's just make the preview. Let's put it in a Z stack and we'll do color dot black dot ignore safe area. Just so that when we come back, we can see what it looks like a little bit better. And let's put this into our app. So we're gonna go back to our locations view where we have our text hello. Let's add our new location uh, map annotation view. Open, close parentheses. Let's click resume. And we should have a custom annotation view that's going right above where all of our locations are. I think that looks pretty good. So if we start clicking to the next, we should see all of these buttons uh, and they're obviously working exactly as expected. Cool. A couple things I wanna do here is uh, firstly, uh, if we are selected on this specific annotation view, I want that to be a little bit bigger than the other ones. So on this annotation view, let's add a dot scale. We're gonna use a animator here, so scale effect, and we'll say if vm dot map location, so that if the current location is equal to the location that we're looping on right here, so if it is the current location, let's give it a scale, question mark, we'll give it a scale of one. Otherwise, if it's not the current location, we'll do 0.7. All right, so now the current location will be a little bit bigger than the other ones. We can see these are a little bit smaller on the map here. And if we go to the next one, we should see a nice animation uh, to the next one, which is looking pretty cool. While we're here, let's give these maybe a, a quick shadow, 10, uh, just to make it look a little better, stand out a bit. And next thing, let's also make these tappable. So if I click on one, let's go to that location, right? Because that would be a pretty natural UI. So on these pins, we'll add a dot on tap gesture. And then we're going to call VM dot uh, show next location. And of course, we can just pass in the location that this pin is for. So we'll pass in our location here. So it's that simple. And now I can click from pin to pin to pin. And you'll notice that the map is moving, the pins are animating, and the bottom things animating, and the top tiles animating. So everything in our app is just moving completely together. And that is kind of the whole power of Swift UI. It's because we can get all of our code, all of our UI referencing the same data sources, and then we can animate based on that. So we change the next location, and then everything is automatically updating, which is creating a really nice UI effect. All right, the body here is getting a little long, so I'm just gonna cut this map out. Come to the bottom of our view here. We'll create a private var. We'll call this map layer of type some view. Paste in our map down here. Let's add the map layer back up to our app. Let's put it right here. Click resume one more time. And while we're doing this, let's also take this Z stack here with all of our locations. Let's cut it. Let's come down to the bottom and let's make a private var locations preview stack of type some view. Paste that in here. Let's put our locations preview stack back up right here. And we can delete some of this extra spacing. Get our body nice and highly readable. This is how we write awesome Swift UI code because now anyone can come into our app here and understand in literally 10 seconds exactly how this whole entire screen is structured. There's a Z stack, the background layer is a map layer. On top of that, we have a V stack. Clearly there's some sort of header, which clearly is the top. 
there's a spacer, and then there's a stack at the bottom, which is this. So super readable, super organized. I'm loving it. I hope you guys are too. That's it for this video. Our app is really coming together. Hope you guys are enjoying the course. And if you are, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a like, of course, on this video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.